What is going on members of the Shy Guys squad and MPL fans alike, my name is Dan, otherwise known as Donicky, and welcome to the team builder for week 8 of the Major Pokemon League against uh, Pterodactyl and the Sin City Star Raptors. Now, um, this week's a tricky one because Pat has a very strong team that consists of Excadrill, Hippowdon, Florgus, Mega Blastoise, Rotom Heat, Nianxiao, Celebi, Drudagon, Tornadus, Therian, and Snorlax. So he has one of our last season MVPs being Chaser, which he has probably named Helmarok King. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you right now, Pat, I know you're gonna watch this. Helmarok King ain't doing shit to my team right now, I'm telling you. He's gonna be 12 and 3 by the end of our battle if you bring him, I'm telling you. Because, uh,. Helmrock King or Tornadus Therian is sitting at 6 games played, 5 games won, and 12 kills, 2 deaths. I think that's currently leading the playoffs race, no we're just, uh, or not playoffs, MVP race. Um, I think that is the, yeah, that's the current uh, leader of the play uh, MVP race with tw uh, 12 and 2. And our Latios is at 5th with 9 and 6 because, or no wait, 9 and 3. I was looking at Sylveon. Uh, 9-3 and three, Megalodios is our closest, like, our top mon, and it's 3 kills off of Tornadus, but, so, you know, if Latios gets, like, 3 kills and Torn doesn't do shit, then, you know, we tie with it, but we're not bringing Latios this week, and we will quickly go into the team, I will explain everything in depth, but I also have Pat's team open, so let's just get right into the team builder here, shall we? Now, I want to take a moment to give a quick shout out to Under the Radar Kelly, who recommended to me to lure in the Excadrill, uh, since he has that sand team and I have Registeel. Uh, luring in his uh, Excadrill to EQ my Registeel and just countering it, and it's dead. Problem solved. Uh, worst threat on Pat's team, just eliminated, and from there I can just win. Uh, it's not that difficult from there. Uh, so basic, very simple uh, Registeel. Um, its defensive spread consists of being able to take any any special attack from Pat's team pretty well, as well as being able to take any physical hit, uh, specifically like Earthquake and taking like 50% from it. So making sure that I lose about 50% of my health so I can Oko Excadrill because Excadrill's HP stat is a quite the special one. Um, so yeah, with the Earthquake, we knock out the Excadrill if it switches into Empowdon and goes for an Earthquake, we also do a good chunk of damage to that. Um, he could speed creep my Registeel to get a slack off off, but I'm not too worried about that. And I'm also like, the main pl uh, like the main play of this thing is to get Rocks up turn 1, uh, unless he leads Torn, because then I need to switch around a bit, maybe go into Jolteon or something like that. But we'll get into that later. But well, that is Registeel this week, uh, Shuka, count, uh, Shuka Berry counter with uh, Stealth Rock, um, Iron Head, and Rock Tomb, 252 HP, 212 defense, 44 speed def, and an adamant nature just to boost the power of that Iron Head and Rock Tomb. Now the next mod on our team is Gudra, which is an Assault Vest variant with 236 HP, 172 speed, and 100 special attack with a modest nature. Now, I've noticed one thing with Pat's team, and water plus poison is incredibly good against them, because what would normally switch into a poison type attack does not take a water type attack, and the rest of his team just gets demolished. And then of course, since he has a Dragon, we have Draco Meteor, because Dragon Pulse just didn't do the job, so we were like Draco Meteor. Um, I have enough speed on this thing to outspeed, um, I think it was, what was it, was it non-invested Celebi? I believe, uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna open uh, Showdown on another tab as well, but I'm pretty sure I EV'd Gudra to outspeed a non-invested Celebi. So if I go over to Showdown right here and make this thing quirky, we outspeed a 4 speed invested Celebi uh, by one point because, you know, in case he adds just that slight speed onto it to so make the speed tie, but it isn't. So I outspeed uh, a uh, 4 speed Celebi. Which is a kind of nice, and uh, we have a hundred special attack because that's basically what was left over. I mainly went for the HP, uh, like I went for the speed first, see how much I needed, and then I was running some calcs, and I didn't need more HP than that to be able to deal with all of his threats. And of course, the H, uh, the special attack was just to assure some two KOs and Okos against this team. I know I'm explaining it very like vaguely. Uh, 
probably a bit poorly as well but i assure a lot of two ko's or okos on his entire team no matter what set they are the only problem that gudra really has is snorlax and that's a common problem i have against this team with only one reliable like check to snorlax which i'm gonna have to play around but next up is probably the MVP of this week. I'm gonna call it right now. If I see any defensive slow mon on Pat's team, this is my MVP this week, which is NASCAR Bug, the Scallopede. And the reason why I say if I see any slow mon is because here, here's the main game plan. If I see Pat bringing Scallopede, or not, not Scallopede, that's my Pokemon. If Pat brings Florgus, I can switch in on it. I can sub on it. I can sword stance on a switch out, and I can proceed to sweep his entire goddamn team. Well, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna sub on a switch out and then SD on whatever comes in, and then I sweep his entire goddamn team because Aqua Tail and Poison Jab at plus two destroys everything. And if I really if I get the chance and I get the plus four, that is game. That is good game. Pat, take take all of your mods back to Sin City, wherever that is, and just leave. Get out of here. This Scallopede has a potential to 6 0 Pat. Easy. The worst part is it, it isn't even that difficult. All I need is the appro like the right uh, time to switch in. So if I can force Florgus to wish, like if I can put it in range where it would uh, be safe to wish, I can just switch into Scallopede, go for a sub, set up a Swords Dance, I'll have 75%, and I can just start chipping away everything on his team. No worry whatsoever. And I also at plus two I outspeed Rush Drill and Sand. Um, I outspeed like I outspeed everything at plus two, including like um, at plus one I outspeed uh, Jolly Scarf Drill. Uh, I outspeed like I outspeed everything on his team that isn't Scarf Helmrocking if he decides to bring that. But at plus two I outspeed that too, so that doesn't really matter. So if I get up a sub, I that if I get up a sub and a sword, then that's just good game pat, and that is why this Scalpeed is so important this week. So if I can play off my Scalpy appropriately and uh, set it in at the right time and set up, that, that that's game right there. That I think that is the way of us winning this week. Now next up on the team is Mito Guy, our f uh, free agent pickup that we dropped Courtney for to get some hazard removal. Now this is a choice scarf Hitmonlee with the reckless ability just to boost that high jump kick a little bit more, which is our main way of taking down Snorlax. Now we also have Rapid Spin of course because you know it's our only way of hazard removal that isn't defog Megalodios and we don't want Latios to always be locked in into defog and we don't want to bring Latios this week due to the fact that it's like it's matchup isn't good and defensive just it's kind of more a fodder and a burden than it is like power this week or like it um, it's more so like something to sack off and I don't want to sack off my mega just like that when it's uh, it competing in the MVP race as well so we have high jump kick poison jab knockoff and rapid spin poison jab is for general damage on Florgus but hit only will never be in on Florgus if Florgus comes in that is just the invite for NASCAR bug to come in and uh, high jump kick like I mentioned is for the Snorlax as long as he doesn't bring protect knockoff of course for item removal and rapid spin is for his hazards now we have 164 speeds which allow us to outspeed a, a Tornado Therian at max speed, um, like uh, max speed hasty, naive, jolly, timid, whatever he decides to bring. We outspeed a max speed uh, Tornado with the set, we're, max, we're uh, max attack adamant just to hit as hard as possible. High jump kick is actually a 2 hit KO on the Tornadoes, it does 50% min. Um, and we have 92 in HP, which is basically just leftovers to have some extra natural bulk because Hitmonlee's Spadef is pretty, like, its natural Spadef is pretty good, if I do say so myself. So, pretty simple Hitmonlee this week, but that is what we're bringing. And next up on the team is Raikage the Ajolteon with Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Volt Switch, and Hidden Power Water. Now, you may be asking yourself, Hidden Power Water, but that's because I wanted to be able to hit the Rotom the Excadrill and the Hippowdon all at the same time with a, a move in common because I can't do that regularly with Jolteon. And I was just thinking originally HP Ice for Hippowdon, but then I was like, what if he does Excadrill and I can't do anything? And I was thinking hey, HP Fighting, but then I realized he also has uh, Rotom. And if I bring HP Fighting, I can't really touch um, Hippowdon. So I decided to settle down for HP Water to get as much like damage on his team as possible because HP Water and Thunderbolt is also something his team really doesn't appreciate. 
And then I have Shadow Ball on uh, just like extra move right there in case he like... Like it's more so a safe move and it also hits like the Celebi. I could have brought Signal Beam but eh. And then I have Volt Switch just for, moment, uh, like for momentum. I have 150 HP because I'm not worried if Jolteon takes any like uh, hazard damage and I realize that I only have um, like 10 hits in me with the Life Orb because of the 150 HP but I'm not too, uh, it's not too much of a worry for me. I have 180 uh, speed which allows me to outspeed a Mian Shell I, if I recall correctly, a max speed Mian Shell because I think Mian Shell hits like 172 in which it does, I do outspeed that. I did not decide to speed creep the Torn because I expect, like I don't, I can take any hit from Torns, so I'm not too afraid of it and I have way too many checks for it. And he gives me like Assault Vest and stuff, like I think I don't need to outspeed the Torn because if he outspeeds me then I can, I can click whatever against him anyways because Jolteon will probably, like Jolteon will scare him out every time because of the fact that Electric just destroys it. Even if it's Assault Vested, it will do a crap ton with Thunderbolt, which will force the switch into either Hippowdon or Excadrill or something along the line of resistance to um, Electric or Immunity for that matter. So I can just HP Water on that switch in or whatever he decides to do. So that is the plan with Jolteon right there. And, uh, you know, there's leftovers here. This doesn't change anything, so I just say fucking. I got 4 in Swedef because I have 30 defense e IVs because of the HP water, so I can't put 4 in here to boost it, so I was like, eh, let's just drop the last 4 in Swedef. Now the last mon of this week is Trick of Asus, the Greninja, which is a mixed ninja with uh, Scald, Gunkshot, Ice Beam, and Grasnot. Grasnot is based 100 damage against both a Powdon and Blastoise, so they do a crap ton of damage. Uh, Ice Beam is for like for the likes of Tornadus and uh, Dredagon, as well as it, hit, it hurting Celebi, and um, yeah, that's basically that. Gunk Shot is solely for Florgus because Florgus's Fist Death is bad uh, compared to its Fist Death, of course. And Scald is just good stab that can burn Excadrill, it can burn Hippowdon, it can burn Florgus, it can burn everything barring the Rotom. Uh, but, and you know, burns are nice. Burns do burn save games, man. That's basically what they do. Um, you, you get a Scald burn and all of a sudden a threat to your team is no longer a threat. I am very sorry about that. I think I broke my headset again for no reason. Um, okay, we are still here, luckily, and, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, I'm probably gonna cut that out, but, uh, basically, I can just, uh, hurt his team a lot with this set, it's Expert Bell just to get that boosted, because I hit so many things in this team super effective, Excadrill, Scald, Hippowdon, everything barring Gunk Shot, Florgus, Gunk Shot, uh, Blastoise, uh, Grass Knot, Rotom Heat, Scald, Nian Shao, well, Nian Shao is that one odd one out, Celebi, I can gunk shot it, I can ice beam it, uh, Drudagon, ice beam, Tornadus T, ice beam, uh, Snorlax, it's Snorlax and Mian Shao can hit super effectively, and the option for extra sensory was there, but I, it's like, it's no point against this team. But yeah, that is the team this week, uh, tell me uh, what you think about it in the comment section down below, and uh, yeah, so um, we're facing Pat tomorrow, I'm pretty excited, let's see how this goes. And uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, uh, comment down below what you think of the team, what you would have brought, and uh, subscribe if you're new. The Shy Guest Squad is ever expanding, and we're working on our way to 500. Also, shout out to Ninstar. I think that's his Twitter handle. Let me double check that. Um, Nintenstar, not Ninstar. Nintenstar. And um, I want to say... Um, Shout out to Nintendstar for the new intro that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. It looks absolutely amazing and I love it. And the best part about it, I got it for free. So um, that was very nice. And I just like how the it's like anime is going inside of like the Donic character uh, before like it just fades into it. And I think it looks cool. So definitely give that man a follow. His link will of course also be in the description down below. But with that, I'm going to get out of here and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.